No, the last time I addressed this many people, it was a courtroom, and I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> my dad killed my mom and himself with a shotgun when I was 11 years old. God did not exist because he would never have allowed that to happen. Foster homes, addictions, and institutions followed. 35 years of crimes and punishment, over 10 years in prisons. I burglarized doctor's offices and robbed drugstores. I recently printed out my background check from the Washington State Patrol and my printer ran out of ink after seven pages. I use the word convicted where the Lord Jesus Christ is concerned with some trepidation, having been convicted and imprisoned by lesser judges on numerous occasions. Even though atheistic, I was no stranger to churches. With a monstrous heroin and cocaine habit to support, I spent many Sunday nights in churches burglarizing safes and stealing the tithes and offerings. I loved Christmas also, went to several churches on Christmas Day. The bigger the better. The parking lots were full of cars stuffed with presents to be delivered to family when services were over. Presents I stole and sold to buy dope. I'd steal your billfold and help you look for it. Five years ago in Seattle, I was standing in a Motel 6 parking lot in the middle of the night with my arms full of power tools I'd just stolen from a contractor's truck. A cop drove slowly past on Highway 99. He didn't see me. Had he seen me, I'd have spent the rest of my life in prison because of my extensive criminal record. And for some reason, I realized it. That was the night my life changed. I asked a God I didn't believe in to help me overcome my addiction. And he did. I haven't used drugs since that night. Three days into heroin withdrawal, I prayed for sleep and woke up nine hours later. Even though vague and formless, God directed my journey. Alcoholics Anonymous introduced me to the concept of a higher power of my understanding. Even a hard head like me can gag that down. And I began helping others, getting a big warm fuzzy feeling whenever I did, getting outside myself, doing things that didn't have a price tag. Slowly, over a period of several years, that big empty void in my soul I tried to fill with drugs, alcohol, sex, obsessions of all kinds began to fill. People began noticing and commenting on changes they saw in me. God was no longer just good ordinary direction, but a tangible part of my being. I talked to and tried to listen to God on a daily basis because I'd begun reaping the blessings. All my needs were met. I still had wants, plenty of wants, but all my needs were met. But God was the only name he had at that point. I had a thirst I tried to quench with books about God. Not the Bible, that was written by men with hidden agendas, solely to dupe the masses. I tried reading it before and it made no sense whatsoever. And it was so great, why'd they have to rewrite it and come up with a New Testament? Wasn't the old one good enough? I tried talking to about God to people in the AA program, people who okayed a coffee cup or a doorknob for a higher power. These conversations were less than satisfying. I tried a few churches. Trouble was, I had never responded very well when told what to do and didn't feel comfortable there. I did, however, discover that I wouldn't burst into flames upon entering a church. <laughs> then this neighbor I talked to a little, and given some homemade cookies to, invited me to her baptism. Didn't want to hurt her feelings, so I went, fully expecting to get Bible thumped somewhere along the way. Her mother is one of those smiley Christians, too. Be lucky if they didn't tag team me. <laughs> She addressed the congregation and I listened to some of her story. I believed her belief. Therefore, I felt safe sharing my beliefs with her at a later date. I even let her borrow my guidebook, Conversations with God. It took her about a week to compose and deliver a five-page, single-space typewritten letter regarding my book and my belief in it. She systematically destroyed premise after premise, backed every argument with scripture. She ended her letter with an invitation to study the Bible. I agreed, not realizing at the time that these studies would undermine about 90% of everything I thought I knew about God and religion. So many changes in my life in such a short time, never would have believed it possible. Now I'm the one doing the Bible thumping, friends, co-workers, family, anyone that gives me an opening finds out where I'm coming from today. I've become one of those people I used to shun, and I love every minute of it. I search for prospects every day and use what I've learned about Jesus and the Bible to spark an interest. This baptism marks a milepost for me. I'll actually be a member of something worthwhile, this church, this family. 
I never would have entered a church full of troublemakers who don't even know what day to worship if a very courageous person hadn't reached out beyond these walls and led the way. Thank you all for giving me an opportunity to move forward, and special thanks to Denise and Tammy for holding my hand until I got comfortable here. <laughs>